Hi, I'm Dr. Francis Price, and this is my wife, Dr. Mary Ann Price. And we're going to talk to you about the Corneal Research Foundation of America and some of the things that we do and how we help people see. The Corneal Research Foundation of America is a nonprofit foundation, 501c, so it's tax deductible. And basically we set this up almost 30 years ago to give us a vehicle that we could better perform studies and do new research in the areas to improve people's vision. Now obviously the most common thing we look at is cornea. It's the Cornea Research Foundation. And we started out by analyzing corneal transplants. And we still have the largest database of corneal transplants in the Western Hemisphere. And this has really helped us improved outcomes for people all over the world with transplants. Now you might ask, what is the cornea? The cornea is the clear window on the front of the eye. So when you look at a person's eye, you see right through the cornea, just like you would see through the crystal on a watch, or if you were looking through a windshield at the driver. I started the foundation in 1988 because we realized that no one in the U.S. was really tracking corneal transplants, the most common type of tissue transplant done in the country. And so we started that to allow us to keep track of people and basically see who did well, who didn't, and how could we improve the techniques. And from that, we grew into doing a number of other things with the eye, including glaucoma studies, cataract studies, and a variety of refractive surgery studies. I've always been interested in research and trying to make things better and to figure out why things do the things that they do. And if we go back to something that many of us have learned in the Bible, the story of the king that had the three servants, and he gave them each talents. And the whole gist of the story is, is that you should use your talents, don't bury them, and try to make things better. And that's what we try to do with our research. There's a number of changes in how corneal transplants are done. And so there's different obstacles, so to speak, that people had 25 years ago compared to what they have today. Now with that said, some of the people today still have to have the type of transplants we did 25 years ago. For those people that have full thickness transplants, the wound never really heals that strong. And if they're hit in the eye or they bump the eye, even 10 or 15 years after surgery, it can easily break open. They can uh, not only have just a wound in the eye, they can end up losing their eye. And because of that, we had the impetus to really pioneer and help with these new group of surgeries called endothelial keratoplasties, where we only replace the inner layer of the cornea. Now in doing that, we have a small incision like cataract surgery so that after a couple months the eyes are as strong as they were before. And we don't really change the vision and make it distorted like we used to with the full thickness transplants that had a lot of sutures. And so this has tremendously helped people and eliminated some of the biggest obstacles to having surgery. Thirty years ago when we did a transplant, the surgeries were all done in the hospital. Right there you have dramatically increased cost from what we have today in physician-owned surgery centers. Hospitals are still very expensive today, but now we have the option of doing these in outpatient surgery centers that if they're not owned by the hospital are tremendously cheaper. That's on the financial level. But how's it changed otherwise? When we used to do surgery, uh, especially with full thickness transplants, it would take one to three years to get the vision back. The vision results were very unpredictable. Many people had to wear a hard contact lens to see clearly. Now, especially with endothelial keratoplasties like Demet, people can get their vision back anywhere from two days to two or three weeks after surgery. That is a huge improvement. Now, because of the slow visual recovery before, many times patients would just have one eye done. If they had the other eye done, it would be a few years between eyes, maybe a year at the soonest. Now with this more rapid and predictable visual recovery, many of our patients that have the endothelial keratoplasties, the MEC, can have their surgeries a week or two apart. That is a huge change to come in, be here for two weeks, 
and be able to leave with functional clear vision that's normal like other people. And that's just unheard of compared to 30 years ago. Now the Corneal Research Foundation of America works very closely with our private practice, the Price Vision Group, and they work together hand in hand. So the, the Research Foundation, as I said before, is tax deductible, it's nonprofit. Our private practice is like any other business, it's for profit. So how do we work together? Well, patient exams and surgeries are done through the private practice, but the data collection and the studies and the evaluation to try to figure out how we can make surgery better, how we can get better results for people, that's what's primarily done through the foundation. And Marianne may want to elaborate on that. Well, that's one of the unique aspects and what's helping us advance transplant outcomes, make the experience better for patients is because our research foundation actually does track the outcomes. I'm sure you're familiar that most doctors you go to don't have time to track their outcomes. So it's a very unique situation that we have here that we're doing this. And we now are tracking outcomes on over 8,000 cornea transplants performed by Dr. Price and his Price Vision Group surgeons. So the Research Foundation has a diversified source of funding. The biggest source of our funding is generous donations from grateful patients who are benefiting from the groundbreaking work that we're doing. We also have some income that we earn from studies that we're doing with new drugs and devices that can help people. And then thirdly, we earn some income from our educational activities. I think one of the reasons that so many different patients contribute to our research is because it actually touches their lives. Uh, people tend to be interested in things that help others, and they also are interested in things that can help them or help their families. And so some of the things we take care of actually run in families. Some of these are inherited conditions, and so when we're able to help someone and they can see the change it makes, they really understand how important it is that we make what we do even better and how we improve the outcomes. And I think that's really why so many people contribute to what we do. A good way to find out more about the Cornea Research Foundation is to check out our website, cornea.org. We have a lot of information on there. For one thing, we have great videos of patients who've gone through some of these transformative surgical procedures. The idea that your vision is fading and that you might need to have surgery to correct it is usually really scary for people. I think it's really helpful to see a video of other people who've had this very same experience and had their lives open back up after their vision is restored. We also try to be very transparent. We have a lot of information on our website about our mission, our board of directors, our finances, and you'll find when you go there that we're a very lean and efficient organization. We have a small team and it's really pretty unbelievable how much we get done with such low overhead. So I think you'd be very proud to know where your money goes if you contribute to the Cornea Research Foundation. So that all who look may see is our vision statement. Now why do we have that vision statement? Because we want everyone, we don't care about where they come from, who they are, nationality, gender, anything like that. We want everybody to be able to see. They just need to want to see and to be able to have whatever problem they have corrected. And that's what we're really trying to go for. Now that's a pretty big goal. But I think that in the future, we can not only correct things surgically, but we're looking for ways to prevent these problems from even developing in the first place. Thank you for your interest in our research foundation. Any questions, you can direct to us either through the website, telephone, or through mail.